Clothing in ancient Greece primarily consisted of the chiton, peplos, himation, and clamus. Ancient Greek men and women typically wore two pieces of clothing draped about the body, an undergarment chiton or peplos and a cloak himation or clamus. Ancient Greek clothing was mainly based on necessity, function, materials, and protection rather than identity. Thus, clothes were quite simple, draped, loose-fitting and free-flowing. Customarily, clothing was homemade and cut to various lengths of rectangular linen or wool fabric with minimal cutting or sewing, and secured with ornamental clasps or pins, and a belt, or girdle zone. Pieces were generally interchangeable between men and women. However, women usually wore their robes to their ankles while men generally wore theirs to their knees depending on the occasion and circumstance. While no clothes have survived from this period, descriptions exist in contemporary accounts and artistic depictions. Clothes were mainly homemade and locally made since trade with other cultures hadn't occurred yet. Additionally, clothing often served many purposes such as bedding. All ancient Greek clothing was made out of natural fibers. Linen was the most common fabric due to the hot climate which lasted most of the year. On the rare occasion of colder weather, ancient Greeks wore wool. Common clothing of the time was plain white, or neutral colored, sometimes incorporating decorative borders. There is evidence of elaborate design and bright colors, but these were less common among lower class citizens. However, noble citizens wore bright colors to express their wealth as dyed clothing was more expensive. The clothing for both men and women generally consisted of two main parts, a tunic and a cloak. The Greeks had a great appreciation for the human body, and it was shown in their fashion. The fabric was expertly draped around the body, and the cloth could be slightly transparent. Males had no problem with nudity, while women could only be naked in the public bath. The Greeks also influence modern fashion quite frequently, especially in today's globalized world. Modern big name brands such as Zuhair Murad, Dolce & Gabbana, Gucci, Chanel, and Versace have taken elements from Greek clothing for their ready-to-wear and couture collections today. Most notably, Johnny Versace famously used ancient Greek inspiration and motifs in his collection. In fact, his entire branding is based on Greek culture. The logo for Versace is of the ancient Greek monster Medusa's head encircled in the traditional meander pattern symbolizing eternity. Dolce & Gabbana also did a collection inspired by Greek temples and ruins. Additionally, the notorious fashion house Chanel devoted their entire resort 2018 collection to ancient Greece with references to ancient clothing, gods, goddesses, architecture and culture. In addition to using Greek silhouettes and clothing styles, Chanel staged the show in ancient Greek ruins, providing a theatric and refined experience for their audience. Chanel's creative director Karl Lagerfeld is quoted by Vogue editor Luke Leach, the criteria of beauty in ancient then classical Greece still holds true. There have never been more beautiful representations of women. Or more beautiful column. The entire Renaissance, in fact, was based on antiquity. Unmistakably, the designer has an adoration for ancient Greek culture as he implements it in his personal designs and style. It is quite evident that, the drapery, architecture, and mythology from ancient Greece had a great influence on fashion since then, and still today. History and types Chitin The chitin was a simple tunic garment of lighter linen and usually pleated that was worn by both sexes and all ages. It consisted of a wide, rectangular tube of material secured along the shoulders and upper arms by a series of fasteners. Chitons typically fell to the ankles of the wearer, but shorter chitons were sometimes worn during vigorous activities by athletes, warriors or slaves. Often excess fabric would be pulled over a girdle, or belt, which was fastened around the waist see colpos. To deal with the bulk sometimes a strap, or animoshalister was worn around the neck, brought under the armpits, crossed in the back and tied in the front. A himation, or cloak, could be worn over top of the chitin. There are two types of chitons, Doric and Ionic, named for their similarities to the Doric and Ionic columns. The Doric chitin is sleeveless, as sleeve technology had not really been created yet. Much like that on the caryatid to the right, the Doric chitin has a fold over at the top or a poptigma, is attached with fibulae at the shoulders, and is belted at the waist. Unlike the Doric chitin, the Ionic chitin doesn't have an apoptigma, and is a long enough rectangle of fabric that when folded in half can complete a wingspan. 
Before shaped sleeve patterns existed the Greeks attached fibulae ancient Greek safety pins all the way up both arms to join the front and back top edges of the fabric. The Ionic chitin was also belted at the waist. The Doric chitin was usually made of linen and the Ionic chitin was usually made of wool. Peplos A predecessor to the Himatian, the peplos was a square piece of cloth that was originally worn over the chitin by women. The top third of the cloth was folded over and pinned at both shoulders, leaving the cloth open down one side. This upper part of the peplos which is folded down to the waist, forms an apotigma. Sometimes the peplos was worn alone as an alternative form of chitin. As with the chitin, often a girdle or belt would be used to fasten the folds at the waist. Himation The himation was a simple outer garment worn over the peplos or chitin. It consisted of a heavy rectangular material, passing under the left arm and secured at the right shoulder. The cloak would be twisted around a strap that also passed under the left arm and over the right shoulder. A more voluminous himation was worn in cold weather, the himation could be pulled up over the head to cover the wearer when they were overcome by emotion or shame. Topic. Clamus The clamus was a seamless rectangle of woolen material worn by men for military or hunting purposes. It was worn as a cloak and fastened at the right shoulder with a brooch or button. The clamus was typical Greek military attire from the 5th to the 3rd century BC. Topic. Undergarments Women often wore a strophian, the bra of the time, under their garments and around the mid-portion of their body. The strophian was a wide band of wool or linen wrapped across the breasts and tied between the shoulder blades. Women could also wear a shawl called an epiblema. Men and women sometimes wore triangular loincloths, called perizoma, as underwear. Topic. Fasteners and buttons Since clothing was rarely cut or sewn, fasteners and buttons were often used to keep garments in place. Small buttons, pins and brooches were used. Large pins, called peroni or fibulae, were worn at the shoulders, facing down, to hold the chitin or peplos in place. Belts, sashes, or girdles were also worn at the waist sometimes replacing fasteners, buttons. Topic. Footwear Women and men typically wore sandals, slippers, soft shoes, or boots. At home they usually went barefoot. <inaudible> Jewelry Ornamentation in the form of jewelry, elaborate hairstyles and makeup was common for women. Small gold ornaments would be sewn onto their clothing and would glitter as they moved. There is also evidence that the Greeks had rings, wreaths, diadems, bracelets, armbands, pins, pendants, necklaces, and earrings. Popular earring designs included, flying gods and goddesses, like Eros, Nike, and Ganymede. Patterns such as the meander symbolizing eternity was also commonly engraved into jewelry. Gold and silver were the most common mediums for jewelry, however jewelry from this time could also have pearls, gems, and semi-precious stones used as decoration. Jewelry was commonly passed down from generation to generation or made as an offering to the gods. Fabrics Ancient Greek clothing was made with silk, linen and wool. However, linen was the most common fiber due to the hot climate. The production of fabric was a long and tedious process, making ready-made clothing was expensive. It was socially accepted that textile making was primarily women's responsibility, and the production of high-quality textiles was regarded as an accomplishment for women of high status. The most expensive textile was finely woven linen and very soft wool. The linen was almost transparent, as the Greeks had no problem showing off their body. Less expensive and more commonly used was the linen cloth woven from the flax plant soaked in olive oil. Peasants wore coarse wool. Once made, the cloth was rarely cut. The seamless rectangles of fabric were draped on the body in various ways with little sewing involved. The fabric could be crinkled or pleated to give the garment more fullness, as the more fabric one wore, the wealthier they appeared. 
Another way of showing wealth was to dye their fabrics. People used to think the Greeks wore only white because the recovered statues from this time showed white drapery. However, they later discovered that the artwork had probably been painted and that the garments the Greeks wore were actually quite colorful. Wealthy aristocrats had purple clothes as purple dye was the most difficult to get. Yellow was a common dye for the average citizen, and warriors wore red so as not to see blood when wounded. Peasants usually dyed their clothes greens, browns, and greys as it was cheaper but mostly stuck to whites and natural colors. See also Biblical clothing Clothing in ancient Rome Clothing in the ancient world Kausha Petizos References External links Ancient Greek clothing <references>